on this episode, we're making sure your real estate ads meet with ethical compliance standards. You're watching Unbillable. I'm gonna start by saying I'm gonna struggle in this episode. I'm gonna struggle in this episode because Luis here has placed the camera on the table and now I can't touch the table. And just even saying that, you know what I wanna do? I wanna touch the table. I'm not gonna touch the table. I'm not gonna touch the table. Here we go, you ready? We're here to talk about advertising for real estate agents. If you're a real estate agent and you're advertising, you're thinking to yourself, what do I need this episode for? The truth is you're not meeting ethical standards. Now, I don't know for sure that you are not, but the vast majority of ads, ooh, I kinda clipped the table. The vast majority of the ads that I see really are are failing to follow the rules, the ethical standards set out by the National Association of Realtors. So is everybody a realtor? We should start with that. What's the difference between a real estate agent and a realtor? It's very simple. In order to be a real estate agent, you have to study and take a test and then you get a license as a real estate agent. In order to be a realtor with like a capital R, in order to be a realtor, you have to join the National Association of Realtors. That's it. Once you join that association, boom, you're a realtor. So the bottom line becomes, what are we talking about today? We're talking about the standard and the requirements of your advertising if you're a realtor or real estate agent. Either way, these are applicable to you out there in the world. Now, what's interesting is most people think right away of like a real estate agent's sign. It's like signs have been used since the dawn of time. And this isn't even really a new law. This is a law sponsored back in 2016. And here I said, like earlier, we're in 2020, right? We're in 2020 and we're talking about a law sponsored in 2016. I think it actually became law in 2018. But what this law is doing is it's setting standards by which the real estate agents have to include information in their advertising. We're going to talk about what needs to specifically be included as well as what counts as an advertisement. So we had to move over here because the whole table thing wasn't working for me. But what do you have to include in your solicitations? It's really two things. It's your California Department of Real Estate license number and your broker's name. It's that simple. The California Department of Real Estate license number and your broker's name. Think about it. You did all that studying and went and took the test and worried about it so much back when you took the exam. Be proud of your license. Stick your license number on all of your advertisement. And of course, you know you've hung that license, that very important license. You've hung it with a broker. Don't be shy about who that broker is. If you're embarrassed or shy about who the broker is, it's time for you to switch your broker. So make sure all of your solicitation information includes your license number and your broker's information. Now, does your broker's license have to be on there? It can be, but it's not required as long as your license number is on there and your broker's name. So now that you know what needs to go into the ad, it's time to talk about what qualifies as an ad. Okay, let's talk about it. Any first point of contact where you're trying to create a business relationship, that's like a formal phrase to say a business card. First point of contact, like, hey, nice to meet you, here's my card. A first point of contact that's intended to create a business relationship. That's the legal, that's the ethical standard that's being used. So again, a business card would qualify, stationary qualifies, any kind of flyer that you would put out would definitely qualify. An ad, an ad, like an obvious ad, something that you realize is an advertisement, like an ad in the newspaper, of course that's an ad, it's a solicitation. Again, intended to create a business relationship. So what about the for sale sign? Of course the for sale sign. The for rent sign, definitely the for rent sign. How about the for lease sign? Definitely the for lease sign. Now there is an exception for like the generic for sale sign, like the generic one, the red kind of, you know, with the white writing, what we all think of as a generic for sale sign. There is that exception, but again, that's a legal exception. That's not an exception when it comes to the standard of ethics enforced by the National Association of Realtors. So again, there is two different standards here that we're talking about, legal and ethical when it comes to the National Association of Realtors. But again, going back to what the advertisement is, why am I talking about this law that was put in place two full years ago, that was sponsored four full years ago? I mean, what's bringing this into the um, lexicon of what I'm worried about today. The reason I'm bringing it up today is because of social media. I mean, look at me, I'm a lawyer on YouTube and our vlog is intended to like, I guess in a weird way, save you money. I mean, if you think about it, you can watch Unbillable and learn something here without having to pay any of the fees that you would otherwise pay in a consultation. Wait a second. But the point is, if you think about it, really, what is social media? What are you doing on social media? When you put a post up that says, I have an open house this Saturday from 10 to three, 
I mean, what are you trying to do? Are you trying to have people not go to the open house? No, of course, you're putting it there so that people might come to the open house. It's a advertisement. You're trying to encourage them to enter into a business relationship with you. Come buy this house. I mean, come take a look. So maybe you'll buy this house or you'll buy another house. Come take a look. So maybe you can get to know me better and I can take you to see some other homes you might be more interested in, right? Or what about when you post something that just says, if you have a friend or business colleague that might be interested in selling their home, I would appreciate a referral. What's that? It's the same thing. You're again, you're asking for a business relationship. So this is more than just business cards and for sale signs. You got to remember social media. If you're using it to solicit business, if you're using it to try to create a business relationship with the viewer, well, then that's an advertisement and that's going to require you to put in your license number and the name of your broker. And again, don't forget about the little exceptions and the little rules we've talked about here in this episode, because that's what you really need to do to comply with the ethical standards. Let's be honest, I feel so much more comfortable here at my desk where there's like stickies all over and legal documents. I can bang the desk and nothing happens to the camera. What we're talking about here is connections and making connections between a real estate agent or a realtor and their consumer, like their first point of contact. That attempt to create a business relationship requires you to disclose your license number and the name of your broker. It's that simple, your broker and your license number. It needs to be on anything that might be considered a solicitation. That's advertising, social media posts, flyers, business cards, like we just said. But what happens if you don't do this, right? What happens if you fail to meet these standards that I'm talking about? You can be cited. You can be brought in front of a grievance committee. And next thing you know, you're paying an attorney like me to represent you in front of the board instead of watching an episode of Unbillable for free. So be sure to subscribe by clicking right over there. And to watch another episode of Unbillable, click right down here.